Coming up, push to the limit to help rare monkeys. I'm really struggling with it. An amazing trip to a different world. I had the most incredible evening of my life. And serious team conflicts come to a head. I think we all owe you a big apology. Eight-year adventurers have just completed their toughest mission of the trip so far, an epic canoe journey of more than 20 miles to clear the river of illegal fishing nets. Uh, good stuff, guys. That's brilliant. The extreme conditions led to tensions in the team. Jamie hated canoeing and took his frustration out on others. More back to group had or forward. Oh, shush, Jamie. What is this? Is he became increasingly isolated. Guys, can you stop this up, Charles? Because we're struggling enough as it is. Jamie, Seriously. Jamie's being a bit of an idiot. He just doesn't really fit in with the group at the moment. With even greater challenges to come, the split in the group was a worrying development. Day 12, Sirius Amazon Base Camp, 5.30 a.m. I don't want to put my boots on. My socks are really wet and soggy. And... <laughs> There's another big day ahead for the team. So today we're starting our first day of the Monkey and Cody project. I'm really looking forward to that. That's what I've been looking forward to the whole trip. But first they have to make their own breakfast. Oh, the fire just went out. Well done, Sam. You look better. Try not to die, will you, mate? <coughs> it must have taken about half an hour to 40 minutes to tie the fire. <laughs> um, it's quite laughable, really. Their final mission is huge, to build an entire monkey enclosure in the jungle. They'll need all the energy they can get, but when it finally arrives, breakfast is less than appetising. I'm not, I can't you won't, you won't get, you won't get. Guys, we need to seriously spray something. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Goes <laughs> in, lump comes out. Lump stays. <laughs> <laughs> we've got a knife like a bow to get through it. Make Lots sure of energy for today. Put okay. loads of jam in it, a bit of sugar, you won't know the difference. That's what I keep telling myself anyway. Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Leaders Ben and Polly know just how challenging the project will be. I think they're going to find it incredibly tough. There's 3,000 bricks to lay. It's certainly going to push them to the limit. Working in the tropical heat, they've got just a week to do it. There's way more stuff than I thought there'd be, like bricks and wood. You guys are going to be working so, so hard. Seriously, Polly and I were looking at it this morning going, have we bitten off more than we can chew? Matt, you're not looking particularly chuffed at this point. No, I'm just worrying that we might not have long for lunch, so we can't finish <laughs> <push> the <laughs> practice. <laughs> <laughs> the new enclosure will be used to breed rare red wakari monkeys and, where possible, return them to the wild. Oh, oh you big for the ears. The animals here were kept illegally as pets before being rescued by a local charity, ISPTR. So he's got a hammock. That's so cute. He's so adorable. It's really, really human as well. Look at his eyes are huge. His cage is not great. Monkey. I think it's quite distressing seeing the monkeys like that because it's an absolutely tiny cage for just an animal like that. This is just going to be a massive enclosure and I'm now really determined to make it just so nice for the monkeys. Really, really daunting challenge because it's really worthwhile at the same time. The first major task is laying the 3,000 bricks. They need to do it in three days to stay on schedule. And local builders are on hand to teach them the basics. Oh, it's fun. We're having a good time, but it's just really hard. And building in the heart of the rainforest means plenty of visits from local wildlife. Oh, flying oh, yeah, you no, no. You got the coolest bugs around you. Mm -hmm. Some are dangerous, and first to suffer is Leader Polly, who brushes against a poisonous caterpillar. It hurt, but. I think the sting will only lasts about 10, 15 minutes, so I think I'll survive. It's the main spines of the white tips, which are the dangerous bits. 
and it basically gives you a bad burn. But beautiful. As the day wears on, the temperature hits 34 degrees in the shade, and the air is heavy and humid. Drinking absolutely loads, yet still you just sweat and sweat and sweat. This is constant, <sighs> absolute horribleness. It's just really hard to work because it's so hot. Hence the red cheeks. They try to cool off in whatever way they can. <sighs> it feels so well, nice. Once you dry into your it's lovely. It really, yeah, it yeah. cools you down so much. <sighs> Under the strain of the intense heat and work, the split in the group is getting worse. Apart from Matt, almost everyone's keeping their distance from Jamie. I don't know, I just don't get along with him that well. And some other people have told me certain things about him as well. I don't know, I don't like Jamie. I don't think he likes me either, so I'm not bored. I think we can both just agree to disagree. The leaders are getting concerned. I know that he's not particularly happy. Um, and I know that the rest tend to be sort of gang up like sheep and pick on him. And he's just not as involved in the group as he could be. Many of the team have even taken to using code names like Red Ant for Jamie. Good what day. are we talking about again? Talking about him, so Red so Ant. We're basically, we're here to talk about Jamie. There's, there's a lot of and things. And disliking him at some point. Yeah. We're just getting frustrated with him. It's kind of me, me, me all the time. The others have really been behind his back and it was a bit pathetic, really. Coming up with code names and just saying, oh, nobody likes Fire Ant and, you know, he's lazy and, to be honest, Jamie's done most of the work today. And they're all making fun of me and Sam said, oh, yeah, I ate the Red Fire Ant. And I know all along what they were talking about. They think they're being clever and done over it. I've understood everything. Everybody constantly. He thinks he's, a, he's, he's arrogant. He thinks he's match right now. I think that if they got a problem, they come and hit my face at least. Don't let him snigger behind my back. They should try to sort you out. After nearly two weeks cut off from civilization, the team are about to get a very welcome surprise. Each adventurer has a package from their families. My mum says hello, everyone. Oh. Friends that you are making now are probably friends you will stay with forever. Oh, of course, of course. Get <laughs> For some, like Simran, the letters are an emotional reminder of life back home. Now you've gone, I've realised that you mean a lot to me. You're such a good friend. Thanks a lot for being there. <coughs> I bet you stink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's nice. laughs> Love you so much and good luck. Who's that for? My best friend. Oh. And I miss her quite a bit. <laughs> And my granny sent me a letter. And it's just really sweet because my granddad's dead, but whenever she signs the letters, she always puts it to my own and John. And I've got pictures of my cat and my ferret. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> They've also been sent video messages, and some families don't hold back on reminding the team what they're missing. It, the. Rich. No, no, no. Orange juice! No! That's a bit cruel, isn't it? Hiya, Jay. I hope you haven't been mistaken for one of them ginger monkeys out there. I really, really miss my friends and getting letters from them and seeing them is absolutely brilliant. That's all I really want to do is see my friends. Right. Just misses you. You haven't been in the, your bedroom. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jamie. Hello. 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 Yeah, your brother. <laughs>
that's just <laughs> absolutely totally made my day seeing all my family in their natural and environment and my fat cat. <laughs> 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 they can't get up. <laughs> It's the second day of the building project, and after a week of growing friction, the situation with Jamie is about to come to a head. During a break, the rest of the team openly hold a coded conversation within his earshot. Bricks are red. No. I said no comment. <laughs> are you talking about the red bricks, Sam? <laughs> For Jamie, it's the final straw. They all just sat on the log, right about. Four foot away from me, taking the rig out of me. It was pretty sad and childish. Expedition leader Ben has been watching the situation develop. I have a quick word. And he decides urgent action needs to be taken. I just wanted to have a quick chat because um, you seem to be becoming less and less involved um, you know, in the group. And that's not how we run expeditions. It's been around for a while now, and I've taken in. There's so much someone can take. Yeah, now we need to have a chat to everyone as a whole, all right, because this can't go on. Guys, can you just stop what you're doing, yeah, and just come over here, please? All right, guys, and what has come to note is that one person has gradually become mentally, uh, psychologically bullied, all right, by you lot. You're making this for one individual, and that person's Jamie. Anyone been the victim of bullying? Yeah. Yeah? Anyone enjoyed the experience? Mm. Right, well, it stops right now. So sit down now, in a circle, whatever it might take, so you can eyeball one another and sort these issues out. I think it's a bit harsh that people, to be in with people, they're going to make me feel bad. Yeah. It does have to stop because it's not very nice on Jamie, really. You know, you're sort of taking it a bit too far if you don't like him. The, these hands are OK, but the red hands doesn't do any work. Just, it'll just sit there or something. You guys got a problem with me, but I just, I wouldn't mind so much if you came up to my face and said instead of everything behind my back all the time. But my main problem is I just, I hate being constantly told what to do and in the canoe, honestly, <laughs> I, honestly, yeah, I cannot I stand you, you know that, I cannot. I, I know, no yeah. one can stand me in a canoe, I can't in stand you. In a canoe, in, I was, every time I backpacked you, like, no, nah! and I was like, <laughs> stop telling me what to do constantly. I will admit I have, like, Taking the mic out of you loads of times, and um, yeah, I know, I know you have. And um, my back, my yeah, head. and I would like to apologise for that, but I can say that I'm can't like just start liking you magically, but I can at least be civil to you. I like to be honest, I'm not overly keen on you and Sam. To be honest. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like we're just we're just different different types of people. I just cannot find a way to get on with you at all. You're just really, really getting me everything you do, the way you act to other people. Bit, right? Sam, you're putting your foot down and saying, right, I'm not going to budge because I just feel the way I feel. Oh, no, you can't I go, You can't go through life um, feeling like that. Time and time again, you'll meet people that you'll have to work with and get on with because of the situation. Mm -hmm. And what you've just said is that you're not willing to no, budge one that. iota not to that. get on with Jamie. It's not that I won't work with them. Um, it's, I can't get on with them. That's what I meant. Like my, but I you can get on with them because you, you just have to give a bit. Yeah. That's the point. You can't get stuck in your ways. You have to give, and Jamie has to give. It's a two-way street. So I think we all owe you a big apology. Yeah. We have come to the end of it now, and I think it's brought us a lot closer. I feel a lot closer to you now, and I'm sorry. Yeah, thanks, and I think everybody else in the group is as well. I'm sorry for everyone else as well, so I know I'm a bit harsh at times. Oh, Pile on! <laughs> <laughs> As the team get back to work, the atmosphere is a little subdued. I think for possibly the next day or two is going to be a bit awkward, maybe just today. But I hope I'll have a better time now. And I hope we all just get on a lot better. I think we've got over it. I feel a lot closer to Jamie now. I think it's for the better, that obviously, that all that happened. But it's good to just put it behind us, settle our differences. Bye. For the next 24 hours, Beth is escaping the building site. She's been chosen to go on an amazing mission to try and find rare red wakaris in the wild. I'm so excited about the trip. I'm really surprised that I got picked, actually. Um, but I'm really, really glad and I'm really honoured to go. The only way to travel to another region of the dense rainforest is by float plane. They're heading for a unique project run by Kent University. 
With just a handful of red wakaris left in the wild, it's the only team in the world to observe and film groups of the monkeys over several years. We've got a wall, maybe an hour, maybe two hours, not too sure, to try and find these monkeys. Um, if we see the red wakaris, we are going to be so, so lucky. The university team have been successfully following some monkeys for the past two days and researcher Mark Bowler is optimistic. Um, yeah, we've got a group of uh, red bracari just over there, so um, about an hour away. Let's see if we can find them before we get started. Good for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, fantastic. Let's go. Red wakaris face many threats. As well as being taken as pets, they're killed for food and are losing their home to logging. It's thought there may be just a few thousand left, and today they're proving elusive. This is where we thought they'd be. It just looks like we're not going to find them today. Yeah, I'm afraid this is pretty common. This happens quite a lot with this monkey. Back at base camp, things aren't going too well either. Some adventurers haven't been looking after their feet. It really hum. Oh, it's like a maze on my foot. Oh, yeah. It's constantly sore because it's just constantly, like, rotting away. It's horrible. They've got the start of trench foot, caused by being in wet boots for days. Expedition doctor Antonia takes a look. Oh, yeah. Wash them, dry them really well tonight. <sighs> then, then powder. Everybody's feet stink. I'm getting it from both sides. No. It's pretty grim. I think I'm going to have to move, actually. <laughs> Oh, yuck. 2.30 a.m. and the monkey research team are already up. We're about to embark on a three-hour long trek through the jungle to hopefully find some red Rukari monkeys, so it's really exciting. It's very tiring at the same time. After last night's failure, their plan is to catch a group of monkeys at dawn as they wake up. Unfortunately, after hours of trekking, there's more disappointing news. We've got sunlight now, um, and we should have heard the monkeys if they were in this area, but we haven't, so we're going to move on to a different location and hopefully find them there. At the monkey enclosure site, it's the final day of bricklaying. Sam is the foreman in charge for the day, and he knows it's going to be a major challenge. I think we should, we will, ah, we will be able to get it done. I'll be positive. We will get it done today, but it'll be really, really hard. Everyone starts with great enthusiasm. They've a huge incentive. If they finish bricklaying on schedule, they'll get the day off tomorrow to visit a remote Amazon tribe. Meanwhile, on Beth's trip, there are at last a few positive signs. Researcher Mark has found the remains of food eaten recently by the monkeys. This one's a real typical red wakari food, just here. It's where the, the canines have gone in, one there, one on the other side. But it's sadly as close as they get. The red wakari stay stubbornly out of range. Really disappointed that I didn't get to see the monkeys. Obviously, I've been travelling all day and I'm really, really tired and secretly hope that I'd get to see one. But it just goes to show how rare the monkeys really are. Back at the building site, things are still going well. So we get two more layers done, okay? For lunch. Surprisingly, when it's time to down tools at lunchtime, Georgia and Sim decide to carry on. At the end of the day, the monkeys are much more important than filling our stomachs. And yes, we have got to eat, but you don't need 15 minutes to eat. You only need a couple of minutes. But Sam's concerned that the team needs to conserve energy. Well, I don't want everyone to exhaust themselves and need their energy for later. Bear should be back soon, hopefully. Fully fit, round to go. And as feared, by early afternoon, the team start to struggle in the heat of the day. I'm just really tired, and it's really, really hot, and when you get hot, you get really lethargic, and I really just I can't be bothered to work right now. Hi, guys. Hello. You've been busy, guys. Yeah. Looking good. And now you will be busy, because we're all absolutely happy. Yeah. <laughs> I've been walking for eight hours. <laughs> Despite her 2.30 start, yeah. Beth gets straight to it. Yeah, but but others find it harder to concentrate on the job in hand. Is that all? Should I take the canoe? <laughs> or maybe... <laughs> or maybe the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Ta-da! Towards the end of the day, we've just become less and less bothered, really, I reckon. But we'll just have to, now we're going to have to start working hard again, which we'll probably pay for. The reality is that there's no way they'll now complete the brick lane today. We're obviously not going to finish, so what I want is to do six levels of brick. We come back tomorrow morning and we finish the rest up to the top. I'm kind of annoyed because I really wanted to get it done and dusted today so we could have a nice day tomorrow. So, yeah, quite frustrating, really. Everybody grab a bucket, fill up your brown um, wooden thing with cement. There's still much to do before they can stop for the day, and the stress soon starts to show. Is that white one over there next to Jamie's brown thing? Now go! Go, Sir John! Kelly's just um, gone a bit psychic. We're all doing work, but Matt's sitting on his bum again. <laughs> go, go, go! Do something! Please, do some work. I can't. Yes, you can! I'm never going to get it finished. <laughs> Seriously, Lauren. By himself. To let it become night, so we need light to even see to finish our work, which I think is pretty pathetic. Could have done it in light if we bothered. And when the sun goes down, the bugs come out. <laughs> oh, this bug's flying in my face. <laughs> It's 8 p.m. before the exhausted team achieve their goal. Whoa, it's finished! That's so wonky, it's funny. It's terrible. Oh, I'm going to bed now. But Ben puts a spanner in the works. Sam, do you reckon seriously that that's good enough? No, we need to fill in those holes. We did a bodge job, which wasn't right, obviously, because now we've got to do it again. It takes them another hour to rebuild the wall. I'm hungry, I'm tired, and this has been one of the most miserable days of my life. I'm not being dramatic. It's been so hard, and I've wanted to give up. Today was the most stressful day I've ever had in my life. It was horrible. I'm really struggling with it. Next morning, despite being completely shattered, the thought of the tribal visit spurs them on. Okay, move your fingers. Right. Go. And just before lunchtime, they finally complete the 3,000 bricks. Finished! Eight skilled bricklayers will probably have a hard time doing this with the heat and the humidity. So I think we've done absolutely fantastic. It actually looks quite sort of impressive for three and a half days' work with eight kids who've got no idea what they're doing. I'm quite proud. As the tropical rain lashes down, they head off for a real once-in-a-lifetime experience. They're going to visit a remote endangered tribe, the Ashwal Indians. The tribe is completely cut off from modern life and the team head into the heart of nowhere. For the final leg of the journey, they have to use tiny dugout canoes. As Sim and Matt discover, they're quite tricky to steer. They arrive to a completely different world. The Ashwal were once best known for shrinking the heads of their enemies, but now they live a peaceful life, surviving on what they can find in the rainforest. This is unreal. It's completely overwhelming. Didn't expect it to be like this. It's amazing. Completely. Yeah. <laughs> this is incredible. It's completely surreal. I've, this is what I was looking forward to the most, and it's just wonderful. It's such an experience for me. <laughs> it looks really easy. They're just like, and it hits the box, and we're trying, and it lands like a foot away from us. 
the way his life is just so different. It's just so amazing. <laughs> it's great. As night falls, the young adventurers take part in traditional Ashwal celebrations. As with other Amazon tribes, these traditions are under great threat. There are just a few hundred Ashwal Indians left as logging destroys the jungle and overfishing empties the rivers. The tribe's way of life has hardly changed for generations, so the team's nightly video diary recordings cause quite a stir. It must look like I'm talking to myself and I feel really, really self-conscious. There's like a ton of people staring at me thinking we're an absolute nutter. I got quite emotional earlier. I feel really privileged and really honoured to be amongst these people. I don't think any day I've ever had good compared to this. I'm just trying to save every moment because it's really precious. I'd stay here forever if we could. And I hope they never change and I hope this carries on forever. Tomorrow, the team return to base camp and the daunting task of completing the building project. But the memories of this night will always live with them. Oh, I've had the most incredible evening of my life. It's just been fantastic this evening. I think definitely this has been the best night. It's by far, it's just it's absolutely fantastic. It's unbelievable. It's definitely something which I'll remember for the rest of my life. Next time on Serious Amazon, battling to finish the breeding enclosure. I'm really drained at the moment. Struggling to save a sick monkey. Poor Freddy. And a food hoarder caught red-handed. Crackers, chocolate. I ate you! <laughs>